Thank you. Uh, we'll move next to the treasurer position, and uh, we have three candidates. The incumbent, Norm Rose, Art Kroon, and Brandon Holmes. Uh, we will uh, allow the incumbent, Treasurer Norm Rose, to begin. Hi. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I'd like to continue being your, your uh, treasurer. Back in 1992, I was elected as trustee and served in that capacity in 2004. And in 2008, I was elected as your treasurer. I've been a resident of Ada Township for 64 years, and, and I'd like to uh, continue being on your planning commission, which I was on from 92 to 98, and from 2008, I was elected until, until present. I served on several committees, all through the 20 years that I've been associated with the Township. And with your vote on August 7th, uh, I'd like to serve Ada Township for another four years, so thank you for your support. Mr. Kroon? I'm Mark Crowell, I'm a certified public accountant, and I'm in the current position of treasurer of Ada Township. Uh, I, began my, I began my career in public accounting in 1978, and I'm a certified public accountant since 1985, and in 1991, I was I'm hoping that I can use my experience as a certified public accountant to assist the board of Ada Township in adhering to and adhering to the policy <coughs> procedures that the Township Board has passed. Uh, at this point in time, uh, we have some issues and financial statements that need to be addressed. I think I'm the person to address those issues. I think we can get those issues resolved. And I think we can do it using the current personnel in less time than it's taking my account to do. Uh, thank you very much for coming today. Brandon Holmes. I'd like to thank the Ada Business Association for putting this together. Um, a lot of people don't know who I am. Uh, I'm relatively new to the community. I've been here about seven years. Uh, the community is really important to me. I've really enjoyed here. I like all the people that I've met along the way. Uh, so much so that I joined the fire department about a year and a half ago. And that's just been wonderful for me. Um, and then through the process, I've met a lot of other people. Um, I'm just now starting to meet people in the township. And I'm looking forward to uh, playing a bigger role this community it is uh, so important to everyone here and myself. And um, I'm a citizen first, a politician second. Uh, I'd really like to speak for the, the people here when they have uh, something that they like for us. I'd like to uh, be there to stand up for them. So uh, that's part of the line. Uh, thank everyone for your time. For the treasurer candidates, uh, some have raised the question of whether the position should remain full-time or part-time. Uh, what do you think about that? What impact would it have on the office and the community? There's your vote. I've known treasurers that uh, if I'm going to my different meetings that are part time and also they uh, have full time treasurers, there's a lot of other things to do besides relying on your deputy to uh, run your office uh, that you need to do, reports that you need to do. Uh, and so, Say that we can come back to a part-time position. I guess that would be, you'd have to wait and see if that was something that someone could do. Uh, there's surrounding townships that do have a part-time treasurer, and I don't know. I've never spoken to them directly about if they have additional help. I know one has a couple. Of, it has two people in their office, and maybe that's where some of that work is being. Uh, if the treasurer does it, I do. It's given to another person to do a commission. So only has to be a part-time. I feel that it's a full-time position. Mr. Crone? It's probably a part-time position at this point in time. Uh, whether, whether it becomes full-time will depend upon the staff and how the staff is managed. I feel that we have a qualified staff and I feel they're doing their best. And I also feel that with a little bit of assistance, we can improve Case that are being done. So you can see that the policies and procedures that are put in place by the board of trustees are actually adhered to. So I would look at it from the same point that it could well be a part of my position. I have the experience as a certified public department to do my 
my best to see that we do make a part-time position if that's what's needed, if it's a full-time position. In the beginning, I think it will be, but eventually we can phase it down to the part-time. Mr. Hall, um, I'm kind of, I thought about this both ways, and I know that right now it's a full-time position. For me, it's really hard to know whether it could be part-time. It doesn't mean I wouldn't support it if it warrants that, but right now, without knowing exactly every single task that has to be accomplished in there, it's hard to say yes or no. I've talked to Norm quite a bit about uh, the position, and uh, right now I support as it stands, but if, uh, if the amount of work there requires it to be part-time, I'm not close to that. And now for the treasurer candidates from our crowd. With the recent auditor's finding of over $300,000 of Ada Township funds not properly filed for the second time in two years, how would you correct this accounting error? Mr. Rhodes? Well, number one. Uh, but we start with Mr. Rhodes. Uh, first of all, the, the accountants um, made the comment to us, and I checked, and there was uh, three entries in our general revenue that were made. In May that would accrue back into the last fiscal year that amounted to a, a good portion of that money. So that makes it look a little bit, a little bit skewed. But in the meantime, I found that uh, I had three people come forward and, and offer me some help. I know I'm not a CPA. My background has always been was for 38 years as an engineer, so I'm still learning my job. And uh, I had a CPA come in come forward with a banker also uh, an ex-auditor uh, from another uh, city that uh, has offered their help to me to uh, be able to reconcile the uh, monthly or the general ledger between the bank. The bank account has never been a problem. We've always had the money. It's always accounted for every month. So it's not a, it's a matter of, of, of comparing the general ledger entries against the bank account. You're specifically referring to the three hundred thousand dollar deficiency. Correct. That's what the question was. Uh, number one, the two thousand twelve audit report has not been issued as yet, and so all those findings are um, more premature. Uh, I do, I do think that if, if they are in fact uh, repeat findings, then we need to address uh, with the staff how they're going to why are they complying with the policies and procedures. At the aid of the board of trustees for the sale and reconciling the bank accounts and the fund balance accounts every month. That's a simple task. And we have the software to do it. We don't want to be in a position like Three Oaks was about four years ago, five years ago, when the bank accounts had been reconciled for several years. It's payday and payroll checks are constant. We do not want to put ourselves in that position. We want to address these issues now. The court has set forth all these internal control procedures, and it's imperative that they be followed. So, uh, I've owned and managed several businesses in the past, and done a lot of accounting. I've had a lot of accounting issues that we've had to get corrected, and I wasn't completely aware of everything until the story came out. I knew that there was a small issue. I know that it's the money's there, so that's uh, not a horrible thing. I'm glad that it's there. It's just a matter of getting it. Spot. I think Rose has done a good job with everything, and uh, I think if, if outside help is something I know that was uh, stated that they may need a CPA in there. If, if sometimes that's what you need to get the job done, uh, I'm not opposed to that at all. So I think that that's what's needed, and sometimes just to get the error corrected, that's fine. I think once it's corrected, I think it's just uh, it's, it's an easy process. Uh, for the treasurer candidates, if elected or re-elected, uh, what would be your top priority in the year ahead? Treasurer Rowe? Uh, to continue to keep our, our money in the banks in a, in a safe, uh, banks with a safe bank. Uh, there are banks out there that are offering higher percentage rates, as we all know. You can go and get a, a, a one and one and a half percent interest on some of your money, but the bank rate is very low, and it's federally insured. But you also don't want to have that being be bought out by someone else, unfortunately. That, that still happens. 
So uh, my goal is to make sure that our money is safe for the bank that we have. I've uh, changed banks since we took office and saved the taxpayers by having no annual fees. Uh, they increased our, our uh, interest rate from 0.05 to 0.5, and we don't have to keep any minimum daily balance as we did uh, in the previous uh, bank that we used. So that's my main goal to make sure that our, our money is safe and your money is safe when it comes to the next four years. Mr. Crow, my, <clears throat> my initial focus is going to be to clear up these material weakness uh, statements that. Uh, on any firm of Siegfried and Preamble that's presented. The first one here is a serious one. We consider the following deficiencies to be material weaknesses. Policies and procedures over monthly bank reconciliations are not effective because necessary adjustments to the corresponding general ledger cash accounts are not identified and recorded. This is a repeat finding. That means it's been going on for more than two years. I, I don't say that there's anybody in the staff bunch of staff that's not trustworthy. I just think it's essential that we adhere to the internal controls that have been put into place by the township board. And the other thing is, we're not reconciling these checking accounts. We don't know what checks have been approved or unapproved. We don't know if unapproved checks are clearing. Uh, we don't know the appropriateness of all of these checks. So we need to do something about We need to get our house in order, and we need to get that foothold and that display exception written on. We need to get it out. The second exception is regarding financial statements. And there's 1,240 townships in the state of Michigan. And I think that's probably uh, virtually all of them have this same foot. Thank you, sir. For expired. Mr. Holmes, your top right. I agree with Mr. Crew. I think the most important thing is to get that issue handled. Um, once you have that handled, which I, sounds like they're really close to getting that taken care of. I think it's just the uh, just handling the funds. It's really important. It's a, it's a big responsibility. It's a lot of money that we do with here. And I think just making sure that this issue doesn't happen again is uh, the most important. Um, and I think another issue where the township can regain some funds is just going after the unpaid taxes. I know a lot of that. Um, I know past businesses I've had a lot of unpaid funds, and that's something that I'm pretty good at. And I think that's a big spot for the 